once Vivekananda was sitting in uh, Abu station and one of his brother disciples came there, Turiyanandji Maharaj, along with Swami Brahmananda. And uh, they looked at Swamiji. Swamiji was heading for Bombay. Hmm? And then he, they looked at him and um, Swamiji looked at them. And Swamiji suddenly burst forth and said, Hari Bhai, I, I still really do not know what your religion is. But my heart has expanded immensely. My heart has expanded infinitely. And I breathe in agony at any single person's suffering also. I am not able to take it. And saying this, Swamiji was so filled with emotion, he actually broke down. Looking at Vivekananda's state, Turiyananji Maharaj thought that this is actually the state of Buddha. This spiritual realization which the Upanishads are speaking of brings about this transformation in the person. All expanded state of mind, all inclusiveness. This incident touched them so much, they understood that he is really a Buddha in the making. And his impact, which you know about in the West, it is all due to this cultivated heart and mind. Agar yog bal ho, yog shakti ho, Vivekanandas can be created. Isn't it? Agar ye bal na ho, you only live with your silly mind, untrained mind. It will just take you for a ride around life. Kato Upanishad mein yahi bola jata hai. Let me give you a beautiful analogy from there. You know how human, my, human uh, life is? It is like a chariot ride. The chariot is your body. The senses, they are the horses of the chariot. Please picture this in your mind. The chariot is your body. The, the horses which carry the chariot forward, they are your senses. The reins are your mind, your mental faculties. The charioteer who actually rides, who actually controls the chariot is your buddhi, your intellect. The Upanishad is telling us this. And the rider of this chariot is the Atman. Now the Atman using the, your body-mind complex is going along the road of life. The chariot is going along. But if the senses are not controlled, if the horses have absolutely no blinkers and are not trained, they will go anywhere, isn't it? So your chariot also will go anywhere. You will not reach your destination. The senses are actually like horses. So you know, one who comes into this way of thinking, first of all, regulation at this level. I will expose myself only to that which is good and noble and great in life. This is how a great life starts. Commitment to righteous living. Commitment to honesty, commitment to the greatest principles of life. I will give my life for a great goal. I will not invest it in silly things. I will not waste it. This idealistic attitude should come into life. It starts with, I will keep my senses oriented towards great goals. The next thing is the reins, which are your mind. If the senses are in order, you know, to a great, great extent, the horses are blinkered in a chariot which means actually directed towards one particular direction, the direction you want to move in. So if you keep the senses like that, the mind will be controllable. Who controls the mind? The buddhi, the charioteer. See, charioteer, driver is most important uh, person in the vehicle, isn't it? If he is very alert and very good driver, you'll have a very smooth ride. So your buddhi is the driver of your life. This is what the Upanishad is saying. If it is awake, alert, alive, fully awakened and sharp, discriminative, analytical, understanding, it will give you a smooth ride in life. Otherwise, if the charioteer is drunk or half asleep, you never know where you will go. So also in your life, if the intellect is not trained and sharp and alert, you can go anywhere. So. The senses, the mind and the intellect. The mind is in the hands of the intellect. The reins are in the hands of the charioteer. So with your intellect, you should be able to control your mind and your senses. Through your senses to a great extent. Hmm? If you do this, this rider of the Atman in you will have a smooth ride through life. He will reach his destination, his great goals in life. So this is a beautiful analogy given in the Kathopanishad. If you actually read Vivekananda's life, 
you will have practical demonstrations of these principles which the Upanishads are giving you. You know, Swamiji once said, um, a knower of Brahman becomes very calm and unruffled under all circumstances. He, he said this in the US, because naturally the mind has come to rest in the self, in the Atman. It's under com complete control, so he's calm and unruffled. Now there were a number of cowboys there who doubted, how can a man remain calm and unruffled all the time? So they invited Swamiji to their village to lecture there and one day Swamiji landed up in that village and they were very happy to receive Swamiji. They called a group of their friends and they upturned a tub and made Swamiji stand on that and asked him to deliver a talk. As he was delivering the talk, you know, they started, they went into the background and started firing at close range. All around Swamiji bullets were whizzing past. But Swamiji was so absorbed in his subject, so collected, so calm, so unruffled, it didn't bother him at all. After the talk, when he got down, they came and shook hands with him, these cowboys, and said, Swamiji, you really are the most authentic person you, we have met because you said it is possible for the mind to go into perfectly calm state. We saw you in that state. Bullets were whizzing past your head and yet you were unruffled. And look at our minds. What have we to worry and fear and get anxious and depressed about? Itna kya hua hai humare jeevan mein? Are bullets whizzing past us? But we go into such negative modes of mind. And among young students, when this is happening, it really gives so much pain to our heart. So raise yourself by yourself. It is there in your own culture how to do this. Uddhared Atmana Atmanam Bhagavad Gita says, Na Atmanam Avasadayet Atmaiva Atmano Bandhu Atmaiva Ripuratmanaha. You must raise yourself by yourself because you are your greatest friend or you are your greatest enemy. If you train the mind, you are your own friend. If the mind is totally untrained and wild and gross, you are your own enemy. You don't need another enemy to destroy you. This intelligence will work against you. So understand the value of human life, the nature of human life. If you invest in this knowledge, you will build this mechanism. You will build this personality. If you don't invest even a bit in self-knowledge, you are all outward turned. Then Mahati Vinashti Upanishad says, because you never know how your chariot will go. Hmm? So that is why this training, this understanding is part and parcel of our culture. Learn to draw from it.